my 10-year high school reunion was approaching, and initially, I had no plans of attending. However, my friends managed to convince me otherwise. The reunion was scheduled for a Saturday in August and was organized by a group of people from our graduating class. It was set to take place at a catering hall in a nice part of town. It had been quite some time since I had seen any of these people, except for my handful of friends from high school who had convinced me to go. To be honest, I wasn't particularly thrilled about the idea of attending. I didn't have the best memories associated with many of my high school peers. And the thought of engaging in small talk with the hundred or so people I hadn't seen in a decade sounded rather dreadful. However, I also felt that if all my friends were going, and I didn't, I might end up regretting it. So, when the night of the reunion finally arrived, I drove to my friend Kayla's house, and our other two friends, Marissa and Sophia, joined us there. We decided to pregame at Kayla's place, and then called an Uber to take us to the reunion. The reunion officially started at 8 p.m., and we arrived fashionably late at 9 p.m. As soon as we stepped into the party hall, I was greeted by a sea of familiar faces, albeit older looking versions of everyone. There had to be at least 80 to 100 people in attendance, which was more than I had expected. Being there with my friends made it easier to reconnect and say hello to people I hadn't seen in ages. The atmosphere, however, was different from what I had anticipated. There was a DJ, flashing party lights, and a generally loud and lively environment. I had imagined a more quiet and intimate setting, with a greater emphasis on conversations. People were enjoying themselves, and some were getting quite drunk, including my friends. We found a table and joined some other girls from our high school days making it a group of about 10 of us. As the night went on, and everyone continued to mingle and catch up with different people, I couldn't help but feel a sense of nostalgia and curiosity. As my friends got absorbed in their own activities, I found myself sitting alone at our table, feeling a bit awkward. While I was eating, I happened to notice a guy at another table who seemed to be looking in my direction. Our eyes met briefly, and I quickly looked away. However, my curiosity got the best of me, and I glanced back for a second, only to find him still looking at me. Before I knew it, he was making his way over to sit next to me. He introduced himself as Connor and wasted no time in starting a conversation with me. He mentioned that he had noticed me from across the room and couldn't resist coming over to say hi. I must admit, he was rather good looking. And since I felt a bit awkward sitting alone, I didn't mind his company. I asked if he had attended our school, but he mentioned that he had transferred to our school during our senior year, so I probably hadn't met him before. I replied with an intrigued, Oh, that's interesting. Who do you actually know here? He explained that he was friends with a couple of guys who were also at the reunion. When I asked for their names, he gave their first names, and I guessed their last names correctly, which earned a laugh from him. We continued talking for a while until he asked for my number so that he could rejoin his friends. I shared my number with him, and he walked away. My overall impression was that he seemed like a normal, friendly guy, and I had enjoyed our conversation. Now, finding myself alone again after finishing my food and drink, I decided to go in search of my friends. They were scattered, each engaged in conversations with different people, some of whom I wasn't particularly fond of. I approached Kayla who was in the middle of a conversation with a few others, and joined in. My friends were all quite intoxicated, whereas I was definitely feeling the effects of alcohol, but 
not to the same extent as them, I began to contemplate going home, feeling like I had had enough of the party. Just as I was considering this, Connor sent me a text, asking if I needed a ride home since he was leaving. I replied with a grateful, yes, please. He instructed me to meet him in the lobby of the building. As I looked around at the crowded room, I decided to make a discreet exit. As there were too many people to say goodbye to, I spotted Connor in the lobby by the front door, and we made our way to his car, a black two-door coupe. Though I must admit, I'm not a car enthusiast. He asked me to input my address into his phone, and I thanked him for offering to give me a ride home as we headed off. Here's the improved version of your text, with better paragraph structure, punctuation, and clarity. As we started to drive, Connor pulled a couple of water bottles from the back seat and handed me one, suggesting that I should drink plenty of water to avoid a hangover tomorrow. I began sipping the water, and suddenly my phone started blowing up with notifications. Kayla was calling me, and Marissa and Sophia were texting me in our group chat. I chose not to answer the call, but read their texts. They were asking where I had gone, and I informed them that I got a ride home. They continued pressing me, asking with whom. Kayla advised me to check the Facebook group that had organized the reunion. Marissa then sent a screenshot of a post made by a girl in the Facebook group warning everyone about a random guy who wasn't from our school. He had been going around talking to girls and introducing himself with different names to each one. Kayla tried calling me again, but I declined her call and texted her that I was with a guy named Connor. She replied in all caps, saying that someone saw me leave with that guy. At this point, I felt like I was going to vomit. I looked at Connor and evaluated the situation. I knew I had to make a run for it when the opportunity arose. The next time we stopped at a red light, I opened the car door and said, I've got to go. And then I ran as fast as I could. I ended up in the parking lot of a TGI Fridays. He didn't chase after me. He simply kept driving. I called Kayla immediately, and she told me to wait there. They would all take an Uber to pick me up. I waited in that parking lot for about 15 to 20 minutes, feeling extremely intoxicated and lightheaded by this point. I couldn't shake the feeling that he had put something in that water bottle to try and sedate me. But thankfully, I hadn't consumed much of it. The worst part was that the guy now had my apartment address. We all spent the night at Kayla's house. The next morning, I drove back to my apartment. However, shortly after entering my apartment, there was a knock at my door. I panicked, thinking it was that guy. But then I saw it was my neighbor through the window. I cautiously opened the door, and my neighbor asked me if I knew the guy who had come to my apartment the previous night and had been looking through the windows. I proceeded to tell him everything about the incident that night. My neighbor was appalled too when he confronted the guy. The guy had asked him if this was where Miranda lived, but my neighbor was wise enough to respond, no, you have the wrong apartment. My neighbor's quick thinking might have saved me from that guy ever returning. When my lease was up, I decided to move to a different apartment within the same community just to be safe. I couldn't thank my friends enough for warning me in time before it was too late. My high school held five and 10 year reunions. A few years ago, I attended my five year reunion. Our high school was on the smaller side with around 200 kids per grade. So just about everyone knew everyone, even if it was only partially. For the five-year reunion, it was being held in a small banquet hall in town. I was excited to reconnect with all my old friends whom I hadn't seen in years. Of course, 
Arriving alone can be a bit intimidating, so my friend Julia and I decided to go together. Julia had been my best friend since middle school, and she knew everything I had been through, including the situation with a boy named Tyler. Tyler and I had a bit of history. We had hooked up a few times during senior year, but he quickly started exhibiting signs of obsession and instability. When I decided to cut him off, he began to threaten me and turned aggressive. He sent me threatening texts, claiming that he knew where I lived and when my parents weren't home. One night, he even showed up at my parents' house and threw rocks at my window. My dad had to go outside and chase him away. With time, I guess he lost interest in harassing me. But Tyler was friends with some of the weirder kids in high school. Not the athletes, not the cool kids, not the goths. Just a slightly peculiar group. When word got out about his harassment, many people in our high school began to despise him. I hoped he wouldn't be at the reunion. Julia and I arrived at the venue where the reunion was being hosted and began mingling with old acquaintances. There were around 50 people there at the peak of the night. Here's the continuation of your story with improved structure, punctuation, and clarity, which was a solid turnout considering the small size of our grade to begin with. At some point during the night, however, I felt a tap on my shoulder and when I turned to see who it was, my heart sank. It was none other than Tyler. He said, hey, can we talk? It had been years since I'd spoken to him, and that was the first thing he said to me, trying to keep it civil. I responded with something like, hey, I hope you're doing well, but there's nothing to talk about. I attempted to walk away, but he grabbed my shoulder and spun me around, saying, you're already going to be like that. I pushed his hand off of me firmly and said, let go of me. He looked around nervously and replied, all right, all right, before walking away. It was evident that he didn't want to draw negative attention to himself. This encounter completely ruined the mood of the night for me. As I had to go to great lengths to avoid looking at or going anywhere near Tyler. I noticed he was with one of the kids I remembered him hanging around with in high school. I got into a conversation with Julia and a few other girls about the situation with Tyler and how he had just grabbed me moments ago. Everyone was on my side and agreed that he had always been a weird and creepy guy known for being aggressive with girls. Oddly enough, I didn't really see him again after I spotted him with his friend. I assumed he had left early, which was a major relief for me. Julia and I stayed for a few more hours before leaving with a few other girls to go to a nearby dive bar. After another hour or so, Julia dropped me off at home. As I walked up to my front door, I noticed another car passing by, following Julia's car and continuing down the street. Considering the late hour and how quiet the street usually was, it was concerning. The car was a Jeep Cherokee. Maybe it was paranoia, or perhaps it was a justified curiosity. But the next day, I decided to look up Tyler's Instagram. His profile was private. I requested to follow him using my fake account I had for situations like this. Surprisingly, he accepted my follow request, but I couldn't see any pictures of a Jeep or any car for that matter. This left me feeling uneasy and on edge, slightly more at ease. I live alone, so my worst fear was Tyler finding my new address and coming to my house at night. The next day, Tyler sent me a direct message on Instagram a long message trying to manipulate me into seeing him again. Even after all these years, he was still giving me those obsessive, creepy vibes. In response, I blocked his Instagram account, 
but little did I know what would happen next. That same night, after blocking him, I woke up to my doorbell ringing repeatedly at 1 a.m. I was so scared. I just knew it had to be Tyler. I didn't know what to do, and I didn't have my dad here to chase him away, as he did all those years ago. My parents now live in Florida. The doorbell ringing turned into angry-sounding pounds on the door, echoing through the apartment. This pounding went on for what felt like an eternity, then the doorbell again, over and over. Finally, I mustered the courage to approach the door, and as soon as I did, it stopped. I peeked out of the window at the top of the door, but there was nobody outside. I slept with one eye open that night, full of anxiety. The next day, my friend's dad stepped in to help. He contacted his detective friend in our hometown, who came by the house. He took pictures of the text from years ago, and the long DM from just a few nights before. Then, he reached out to Tyler and gave him a verbal warning to cease all contact, emphasizing that it would be considered stalking and harassment if he didn't comply. So far, it seemed to have worked. It made me wish we had gone to the police all those years ago. Some people are just dangerous and don't change. I hoped he wouldn't show up at the 10-year reunion. Now let me tell you about my experience with Phoebe. We had been seeing each other for a few weeks. We met on a dating app, and after two dates, I felt intrigued by her. Phoebe was four years older than me. Our first date was for drinks and our second date involved going out with my friends on a weekend. My friends had neutral opinions about her, describing her as nice, but also kind of quiet. Little did I know that their true feelings would be revealed later, but I'll get to that part shortly. Phoebe invited me to an upcoming high school reunion party. She mentioned that she didn't want to attend alone, and honestly, after she had accompanied me to some social events, I felt obligated to go with her, reasoning we could think of at the time. The growing awkwardness at this party was difficult to explain, but one thing was certain. This was not what a typical high school reunion should be like. There was no music, and everyone was dressed strangely, not like typical 28-year-olds. The party was falling on a random Saturday in the fall, and it wasn't organized by Phoebe's school. She mentioned that it was being hosted at a rich guy's house from her class. When we arrived at the house, it did indeed look fancy, complete with a gated driveway. However, there were no fancy cars parked anywhere in sight. I assumed that maybe the owner had parked his car in the garage for the duration of the party. As soon as we stepped inside the house, I couldn't help but feel like everyone was staring at us, particularly me. A few people came up to Phoebe, giving her warm greetings before their attention shifted to me. It felt almost as if I was being interrogated with the personal and peculiar questions some of these people were asking me. They wanted to know my entire life story, my occupation, and who I lived with. Finally, Phoebe managed to pull us away, but we ended up in conversations with other people who were just as interested in asking intrusive questions. There was something odd about the people here. They appeared older than 28, which was the age Phoebe had told me she was. Some of them looked well into their 30s. I commented on this to Phoebe, and she admitted, yeah, some of these people aren't aging too well. Curiosity got the best of me, and I asked her if she remembered all these people from high school. She claimed that she did. I then inquired about the party host, eager to meet the owner of this magnificent house. Surprisingly, she hadn't seen him yet. Throughout my time at the party, it felt like every pair of eyes was fixed on me, and they wouldn't look away. 
everyone's giving me dirty looks. She responded, it's probably because they're wondering who I am. At that moment, it seemed like the only logical explanation. Then something else struck me. None of these people looked like they were in their twenties. The discomfort I was feeling was growing with every stare directed my way. So I decided to tell Phoebe that I needed to use the bathroom. In reality, I just wanted to escape that room and explore the house for a bit. I didn't have a drink in my hand or anything to make me feel at ease. And I was wandering around this enormous house, empty handed. Everyone I passed seemed to stare at me and it was clear that I felt utterly out of place. Eventually, I found the bathroom and stepped inside. Even though I didn't actually have to go, I locked myself in there, not to use the facilities, but to take a break from the awkwardness outside. I began texting all my friends about how bizarre this reunion was and wondered how I could convince Phoebe to leave early. We had already been there for about 30 to 45 minutes, and there was no sign of the unnamed mystery party host. Phoebe texted me, asking where I was. I replied that I was in the bathroom and asked her to give me a minute. Then I followed up with, this party is really weird. I'm down to leave soon. Everyone's being weird. She asked why and I explained that everyone was acting strangely. Just then, someone knocked on the bathroom door and I couldn't stay in there any longer. I quickly washed my hands and left the bathroom. The guy waiting outside, who looked younger than most of the others, spoke to me in a very low voice and said, you should leave. That girl isn't who she says she is. I froze for a moment then replied, Phoebe? He responded, whatever she told you, her name is. Then he asked what Phoebe had told me about this party. I told him that she had said it was a high school reunion and the guy's expression turned grave. The guy smirked and said, do these people look like they're going to a high school reunion? He concluded with, trust me, leave sooner than later. With that, he walked into the bathroom and shut the door. I considered knocking to get him to come out and explain further, but I quickly realized that I was already suspicious and uncomfortable in this house. His words had only confirmed that something strange was happening. I made my way straight to the front door, trying not to draw any attention to myself I still felt the weight of people's stares on me as I walked towards the exit. I proceeded to walk straight to my car, parked on the street, and drove home. When I got home, Phoebe texted me, asking where I had gone, but I didn't respond. Instead, I decided to look up her number on white pages. To my surprise, the number was not associated with the name Phoebe. The name that came up was Claire Foster. Moreover, the address where I had picked her up both times was different than the address I had for her. Alarm bells were ringing in my head and I couldn't ignore the feeling that something was terribly wrong. The address that came up on white pages made me realize something unsettling. I had never actually seen her leave the house. On both occasions, she was already waiting on the sidewalk when I arrived to pick her up. I replied to her text, simply saying, I had to leave, I'm sorry, and promptly blocked her number. When I shared my experience with my friends, they all made jokes and admitted they had found her behavior strange and off-putting from the beginning. They didn't want to tell me earlier to avoid making me feel bad. One friend even quipped that it sounded like I was living in a horror movie akin to Get Out. My friends and family came up with various theories to explain what might have been going on. Some people thought I might have been exaggerating the situation until I told them 
about the fake name she had given me, and the mysterious guy warning me to leave sooner than later. To this day, I can't say for sure what was happening at that party, but I'm grateful that I trusted my instincts and left when I did. It was a bizarre and unsettling experience that I'll never forget, and it serves as a reminder to always be cautious and trust your gut when something doesn't feel right. <laughs>